I remember when I was 13 years old, David Wilkerson running through the vast crowd at a big outdoor Christian music festival in East Texas, shouting Ichabod at the top of his lungs, which for all of us that haven't yet mastered our Hebrew means the spirit of the Lord has departed. What a sight that must have been. I was actually begrudgingly attending that very music festival. I think my mom thought it would be good spiritual medicine for her wayward semi-rebellious teenager named Eric. But ironically, my mother, after having to lay down the law to get me there in the first place, was so uncomfortable during the festival that at one point, just minutes prior to Wilkerson's battle cry, she grabbed me by the arm and said, Eric, we need to leave. This is deeply disconcerting. So my family was walking out precisely at the same time Wilkerson was running in. Oh, how I wished I could have witnessed the fire in his eyes that day, that desperation in his voice. That was the spiritual medicine I was really needing. A man of God standing for the truth, the integrity, and the glory of our God in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Wilkerson was raked over the coals for his act. He was treated as a self-anointed prophet, masquerading his own personal opinions as the opinions of God. We don't take to men like Wilkerson very well in the modern church these days. He dishes it out straight, and we prefer our truth a bit more crooked. Though he is one of the most powerful gospel voices on the world stage, here in America we hardly even know Mr. Wilkerson exists. Christian radio stays miles away from him, and Christian bookstores stopped carrying his best-selling books years ago. It's called being blackballed. If you play the game right, you can stay in the game. However, if you start to correct the very system that is promoting you, then you're out, baby. Does anyone remember Steve Camp's bold and daring pronouncement about the Christian music industry 15 or so years ago? It was sort of his 95 theses on the Wittenberg door saying, Hey people, this system is only interested in cold hard cash and not the glory of God. We must change it before it's too late. Well, you'll notice that Steve Camp disappeared after that for quite a long stretch of time. And it's not because he grew cowardly and changed his mind. It's that his opinion and his music were removed from the public sector. He was cleansed from the mainstream. Christian radio stations, offended by his audacity, simply refused to play him anymore. Many Christian bookstores exiled his stuff, or at least demoted it from end-cap placement. And big concert venues were careful not to invite this quote-unquote ranting lunatic back to their city. The message is clear. Follow the status quo, don't bite the hand that feeds you, and you can make it as a preacher of the gospel in this great land of liberty. But if you dare to stand up and speak it straight, beware. The big black ball of ignominy awaits. The Jewish people 2,000 years ago had the opportunity to pick between Barabbas and Jesus. As we all know, they chose the criminal Barabbas. We are in danger of doing the very same thing in our modern day. Under the banner of sensitivity and cultural relevance, we have blackballed voices that thunder with conviction and straightforward pronouncement of biblical truth, and have allowed immature and profane voices from the emergent church to stand and to proffer error in the church sanctuary without hardly a whisper of concern. I'm all for blackballing, but let's make sure we are blackballing error from our midst, not the truth. For Moody Radio, I'm Eric Ludy. Please visit me at ericludy.com.